at that time, all we were doing was just writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. That's all we were doing. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of rights, it's, it's, it's expressing, we were expressing ourselves, you know, in, in a way that New York was ready to receive the expression, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they didn't know how to interpret it. Yeah. You know, and so you have this massive movement coming, and even New Yorkers were watching. Well, wow, they just look like they took that regular just writing, mm -hmm. and now it's got all of these colors in it, oh, and it's that, and that, and it's on a train. Oh. And then I go on the inside, and it looked like somebody made a marker and took that weird tag from the top of the the, the, <laughs> the panel, and it's dripping all the way down like that. What does that mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, when you get to that point, and you realize. The drippy tag was a sign of authority. Yeah. That was authority. <gasps> that was authority. When you put a tag and it's dripping like that, that meant something. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official .com. <laughs> You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. All right. That's us. We're in the place to be. Definitely in a place to be. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast live and direct central. Not in London. Big shout out to all the regulars, everybody out there supporting the cause. Sharing is caring. Just as you don't know, we've got the Television app as well, free download, iPhone, Android, for all your street culture sports. That's right, we've got DJ mixes, we've got live streams, mini dogs, and of course, the notorious podcast that's forever in your life and ingrained. We are direct Los Angeles, West Hollywood. This ain't the vocation of my special guest that's inside the place. Um, he is a veteran of the graffiti scene, TDT, KD. UTI, the Z, 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 one inside the place. Yo, what's going on, Keller? How you doing, <laughs> man? What's going on with you, man? What's going on, man? Dude, where to begin? You <laughs> what's going on, this man? This is some first generation shit right here, This is man. crazy fresh right now. I got to tell you, this is big ups, man. Big ups. For those of you who don't know about ZC1, he comes from a pedigree of early adoptees of the graffiti scene over here in the West Coast. And we have some stories to get through. There's plenty of many, my brother. Plenty, plenty of many. many. Come a little bit more closer to yeah, the side. Definitely, so definitely, man. So we're in the cipher, yeah. man. Yeah, we we're, gotta in the, be in the cipher, we're in the mix, and people need to know about cipher, this. Man. That's what it is, you know? Where to begin with you, brother? And bit, first of all, big up Tizer for, for connecting the dots. Definitely. Tizer, thank you, man. Mm. Big ups, big ups, big ups to Shucks, big ups, and also to Cool Tony, man. Heavy crates. Peace, peace. Hold tight. No doubt. Uh, no doubt. I mean, tell us about the landscape of 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 of, of LA at the moment. Where where are things things standing right now, Z? You know, to tell you the truth, LA is a different kind of a, a, a an energy level. You know, the energy level here in LA. You know, I appreciate it because the creativity levels are always off the charts. Mm. Always. Mm. I mean, you always find cats coming up with new styles new things to do and, and crazy different innovative way of repurposing things. Mm -hmm. You know, LA is known for that. You know, so for me, I, I appreciate being here, you know, being amongst the people here and, and actually tell you the truth from where I come from, learning, you know, and, mm -hmm. and making sure that this process, for me, not only to be involved in it and to keep contributing. And mm -hmm. I think that's, that's, you know, it's really important is to try to figure a way to keep contributing. You know? It's funny you say that because with, with a lot of, particularly cats of your age that have come through the, the development and, and the, the ever-evolving side of graph, you, re, you guys really hold a, um, a, a responsibility in your minds. But furthermore, you're very, sometimes it can be really hard to let go. But I think with graph, there is this, you want to see it move you want yeah. to and you're yeah. constantly inspired by that yeah i see yeah. that in your generation a yeah. lot yeah and i think you know it's really important to know about graffiti and from when i when i grew up you mm. know um i come out of the low east side manhattan new york city uh in the time early 70s mm. graffiti is there it's already there mm. and you know for me i'm looking at it going oh and, and it's changing and mm. i think that's the thing is the change the evolution of it the dynamic of it the different ways of seeing people were coming with things, mm. you know, and then and, and as it spread, mm. that's the thing that was phenomenal about it. And then 
generations later, you get to look and see it's breathing, mm. it's moving, it's mm. still growing. It's, it's coming in such of a way that the young cats coming in, doing their homework, they figuring out what's going on, how to, how to you know, create a style, do something with the name, mm. figure out you know, how can I change this letter in a certain way, mm. and then be amongst people. I think what's good about LA, New York, a lot of other places, there's so many people that you can learn from. You mm. could you could be mentored by and then mentor with too. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have a really strong hip hop community here. And I think in this, you know, in terms of this country, I think, really. But LA is it's got its its culture, it's breathing heavy. You know, New York will never stop breathing, you know. <laughs> oh, so yeah. it, it's the it's it's these urban centers, I think, where the level of creativity where it comes, we appreciate it as far as it can go. And there's no, there's no leaps or bounds where it can't go. Mm. You know, so I mean, that's what it is, man. I mean, we're talking about West Coast. Of course you are East Coast. You've also had, you've, you've dipped your toes in, in so many areas of the graffiti culture as well, you know, from owning the shop, you know, yeah. one of the first shops that, that you know, of, of yes. graph. Yeah, no, and no, furthermore, yes. like you say, just KD, UTI, these crews, this is East and West Coast. This yeah. is this is something that yeah. you've held, you know, crown to from early. You know, you've seen so, you've, you've seen it from both sides of the coin, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, and I appreciate that. I've got you know, and I got a big up, you know, Kings Destroy, and it's worldwide. That's yeah, the yeah. thing. It starts from back home. Mm -hmm. It jumps over here, it stops in Colorado, it may stop in some other places. <laughs> it's it's in Chicago, Come you on, know. Son. So you 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 realize like it, it it's got it, it has its stops, mm -hmm. and then. What's great about it, cats in LA will link up with cats in Colorado. Cats in Colorado link up with cats back in New York. Mm -hmm. New York will link back over all the way across. And then you'll watch that go across the world. You mm -hmm. know, X-Men, that's another crew. You oh, know, big up to shit. Tattoo. Yo. Big up to my man Seek. You know? And it's it's um when you see cats like that and, mm -hmm. and you and you can communicate with a lot of people, big up to my man Blen uh, out in Puerto from Puerto Rico. Oh. Um I mean you you realize that that the the movement of it, it just doesn't stop. It's an mm. ecosystem that creates another ecosystem for another ecosystem and it keeps moving. Yeah. You know. So it's yeah, and sorry, you, my mind started to wander there for a second. I started thinking about the characters that are in Graf. Yeah. Yeah. And how, like, they become mm. so... I said it more recently on the podcast, and it, it, it still holds true that you can really tell the character in a person by the way they paint. <laughs> yes, you can. As well. Yeah, right? yeah. It's not just a personal, like, one-to-ones. It's, it's actually, like, knowing about them enough that you can see it in their letters and their right. style, right? You know, I've learned a lot with my oldest brother. He used to run with Lee. Um, and actually, he's the one that actually got me into graffiti. He would sit me in front of Lee and Chico when they would paint pet shops back in, wow. the, back in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. And Lee, as you know, is part of the fan, uh, Fabulous yeah. Five. And so, big up Fab Five, hold tight, Slave. Ooh. Slave, all of them, Ooh. man. Big ups, big ups, man. Lee, peace, you yeah, already know. for real. Um, Lee comes from our projects too, Alfred E. Smith projects. And there's a whole host of crews that have come out of Smith that, that are worldwide. Vifer is another one. Wow. Like, Vifer is from our projects. I grew up with Vifer. Casual, and casual. That's too casual my man. For me. You know, wow. WKSDTA, my man's son. You know, all of us grew up together, and we were we were taught by people like Conan, um, Tev. You know, uh, TDT as well. Yes, mm -hmm. L three. You know, rest in peace. I mean, there's so many of us. There's so TNS. Mm. There's so many of us that was wow. out there. TNS and, man. Yeah, they never stop. Oh. They never stop. Yeah, ninety nine Henry Street. Out here to LA, big ups to TNS crew in a chapter in LA, you know, and they these dudes are Yo, that's crazy they got a chapter in LA as not, well. Yeah. Wow. And these cats, these cats catch wreck. Mm. Seriously. Mm -hmm. I mean, top to bottoms, and not even on rail cars, but just top to bottoms. Damn. Period. Wow. You know, your wow. whole your whole block getting wrecked. <laughs> so big up to TNS in LA, big up to TNS back in New York. And and that's the thing. It's it's just keeping it moving. And being able to be a part of that, you know, it's it's like you know you're looking at Adam. Adam hits hits these certain parts. The yeah. neural system, you know, yeah. it hits these these things. Conduits. It doesn't stop moving. You know what I'm saying? Conduits. No? It's true. Um, talk to me about growing up the way you did. When did you move over to to LA? How old were um, you? I'll take. Your first question. Yeah, that's, yeah sorry, I'm running ahead. <laughs> I'll take your yeah. first question. Not keen am I, come on. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, just so I can explain it, you know, just so I can explain it, you know, for me to be able to, to get it out yes. right. But 
Um, for me, coming up in Smith Projects, uh, it's the, the, the last projects in between the Brooklyn and Manhattan Bridges, if you can think of geographically where mm -hmm. it sits. Um, as a young kid, I, get to, I, I had a chance to watch them build the World Trade Center. Um, Wall Street's walking distance, the court system's walking distance, um, the, where we bombed at, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of places where we bombed, walking distance. And so all of that stuff is happening. You know, we're coming up in the 70s. You know, uh, by the time I went to the first public school in Manhattan, which is right across the street from 46 Madison, where I came from. Wow. And um, like, I, like I said, it, there was, and to, to put this together, me and my man Ishmael came up with ZC. I'm ZC. He was ZD. We were the first two to come up with the two letter Z tags. But it reads Period. like, but, but it does scan like a name. Yes, it does. It's the it, Z it's, and it, the E's. It yeah, sounds it's like the a ZE. Yeah. I got to give, I got to big up ZE also because when we started moving the names around, he came back with this dumb, crazy, Philly fat cap mm. style right in our neighborhood, just letting us know. And ZE knows. So, I mean, we're all in the same well, like neighborhood. Wicked style. Like, yeah, that kind he of came in. It was just nasty. Oh, shit. And so, it, and, and you got ZA, Big Ups, OGM, you mm. know. So, we were, we were the ones that started that two letter stuff. And after that, you know, it, it took off and went where it went. Yeah, yeah. Big Ups, ZB out in Brooklyn, you know, it, it just moves. Yeah, and, yeah, and so, ZW, you got a lot of different type types of styles where it I kind of that just moved. Well. You know, it just. Yeah. You know, like even even uh, you got cast to put letters uh, uh, and then put numbers after their names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and so you, you that's that's a different way of saying hey, you're just keeping it moving. Yeah, yeah, and just know? trying different things out, so it's not right, right. None of us have the same styles. You yeah, know? yeah. And any of us, you look, Z A has a crazy wild style. Yeah. You know, Z E's got stupid hands, and you can catch him with his throwies. Yeah. You know, his throwy game is is bonkers. Oh. You know, so. Um, I was one that they used to tell me when I was growing up, you were one that keeps changing the Z. We mm. can't keep up with you. Your Zs keep changing. So Z's not easy, neither. Mm, well, it's not. Not only is it that, <laughs> but then once you start to break it apart into some components into, mm. and start connecting it back. Yeah, because there are components. Uh, you can have up to one, two, three, four. You could have a bunch of components. A bunch of them, yeah, yeah, and having fun doing it. Yeah, you yeah. know, that's the thing. And even at this point, and, and there was it was a couple of things that kind of sparked that, but we were told early, Make sure that you can just keep your style moving. Don't uh, don't get stuck anywhere. If uh, you get stuck somewhere in, in with your tag or, or how you doing your throw up, don't get stuck anywhere. Characters, uh, whatever you're doing, you make sure you want to do them as as diverse as you can do it. Was that a thing? Was it starting this at an early stage where you had, you know, just those singular letters? Yeah. You must have definitely had moments where you're like, oh, I'm cramping up here. I need to try and develop this. There wasn't anything else that set precedence to this really, was there? Right, nah, uh -uh, no. I mean, you, you, had, you had some cats that were out there that had some definitive styles, and I, and I will say that. Um, and I think for me, what was, what was good is that I learned if once you get something, create it so that's, it, that it's original. Mm -hmm. you, know, you might have been inspired by something. You know, someone might have taught you how to do a 3D or something like that, or put mm -hmm. an arrow in a particular place in a particular style or something. But it's always something that you find within yourself at that point that uh, you could say, "Well, this is mine. You know, I could uh, I could do this this way." And I actually haven't really seen that. And let me go ask somebody too yeah. while I'm at it. Let me go to ask my crew members, my boys. Let me go ask them. Or oh, we all all be sitting there. I remember me and Seek was kids. We was probably about 12, 13 years old, sitting in Mariner's Temple. Mariner's Temple still standing. This building was put up in 1881. What? And it's still sitting there. <gasps> still sitting there. My wow. cousin actually works in that church. It's a church. Um, we was we was kids coming out of coming out of PS one. We would go there for after school, and so we was drawing all the time. You know, always drawing, always drawing. And Seek was nasty with his letters too. He was dope with the letters, and he was like, "Yo Z, you always changing your styles, kid. You always changing your styles, B. You know." And so it made it fun because yeah, yeah. you you had somebody to bounce it off yeah. of. Yeah. And then the more elders that you had, you can keep bouncing, mm. you know, keep doing it. And then somebody, I oh, mean, your style's whack or whatever, or fix that line. The line don't look right, mm -hmm. or you know, or you tagging or something like that. Hey, man, where well, you got the overspray and all that, 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 that. It always gives you a chance to improve. Yeah, and man. I think that's the other side of it. And if there's any young kids out there that's, that's do you want to be a graffiti writer? Don't stop where you are. Keep keep trying to figure out what you yeah. can do to hone a skill. And that's it might so take important. your entire life to do it. Yeah, that's so important. So, and also learning from your elders as well. And also, you know, like, always developing new styles. That's yeah. so important. Yes. You mm -hmm. shouldn't be stuck on one, should you? Nah, nah. And actually, it, it, if, you don't, if you don't grow and, and, and it doesn't, if you don't see it in, in a progression in you, 
like you said, you could tell how a person paints. Mm. So if you've seen that person paint more than once, you know how that person paints. Yeah. And then you already know that person it's at that best, point. It's the best, isn't it? That's the right? best, though. So if you see that person paint, and you go back and see the person paint again, and he did see flip the style out, you, wait a minute. Didn't see that coming. What the fuck? Yo, hold on a second. Mm. And you might see him a third or fourth or fifth time. Each time you see him, something is different about yeah. what he painted prior. That's the growth and elevation that we want to look for. And that's when, and when you see, when you could talk to that person, that person's mind is open in a different way. Mm. Hand-eye coordination's all together in a certain way. Their viewpoints on things are a certain way. And it's worth the conversation. God, that's good. It's worth the conversation. That's good. Oh, God, that's good. That's just thrown so many questions into the air. So when did you move to, um, when did you move to, to LA um, from New York? Okay, I, I, at 18, uh, I, <laughs> my mom told me, I got out of, uh, I used to go to high school for humanities on 351 18th Street outside of Chelsea Projects. And um, Sean Wayans went to high school there with me and his brother Marlon Wayans went to I, IS70 across the street. Right. We come out in 1988, my mother tells me, you gotta go. You can always come home, but you gotta go. Why? She told, okay, she told me there's certain things that this world is going to teach you yeah. that I can't keep telling you. Oh, wow. That's that, there's certain yo. things that this world will teach you that I can't keep telling you. That is fucking that's on some so deep shit. That put me, that packed my bags up. Okay, mom, I'm out. And, and six months deep, I came back. I went to Arizona first mm -hmm. and stayed there for about six months. Um, I tried to get into college over there, and when I seen this kid, he jumped out of the second floor balcony into the swimming pool. I told my mom, I can't study here. This is a party house. Oh, really? I'm not studying He survived here. that shit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a straight up party house. You, you, oh, man. It was um, uh, down in Arizona in Tempe. Sun Devil's down there. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, nah, man, I can't study here. So I went into Arizona, uh, actually into Phoenix, Phoenix College for two years, mm -hmm. um, and uh, hooked up. Um, with my lady, and we shot up to uh, San Jose. And uh -huh. from San Jose, went into, uh, uh, finished up my, my early, early, early studies and then jumped into San Jose State. And met a lot of writers up there that I had no idea. You know, I, got, I get up there, there's TWB, and, <laughs> um, and this is before um, Dell, the, Dell and the rest of Hieroglyphics had come out, because a couple oh, of those tight. dudes is graffiti writers yeah, too. Yeah, I know, it's, yeah. Um, I, come in, I come up there at a right around when Ty, this kid named Ty, was running around and he was doing this thing. I think Saber was up there too at the time in San oh, Francisco. Oh, legends. Huh? Um, and so for me, I'm, I'm just taking in Twist. Twister was another one. Mm -hmm. I think he was up through there too. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just looking, the styles, the way that they was writing was different. Yeah. It's different from LA and mm -hmm. definitely different from New York. But the, the assimilations were there. Hard. So I'm, I'm like, damn, this is dope. Yeah. You know, and you're in this different area, you know. So I went to Oakland from San from San Francisco. Go to Oakland. What was Oakland, Oakland saying? What was Oakland like, saying? What was that know? crazy? It's 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 a, it's a hood. Yeah. But to me, I, I thought when I got it's off, it was good, 13th it? Street out there in Oakland. It was in Telegraph. It was nothing but a giant neighborhood. That's what I thought. That's what I've been and told the 90s about. 90s too. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I mean, is a whole different beast. Mark to that. The, yeah. yeah, if you can. <laughs> Mark the time, I and mean, this is before the riots and all of that stuff yeah. happened. So you're getting up there, and gang culture in the late 80s already took precedence in California, and it was starting to move around a little bit. Mm. So for me, by the time I'm running up there into Northern California, um, I'm starting to meet different factions mm. of people that's there, the community. And the community, inside your community, you got hoods. Mm -hmm. you know? And so I got to learn a lot of, up there, too. It's yeah, different yeah, from down here. When I realized out here, and, and I had mentioned this not too long ago, about tag bangers, mm -hmm. and that's the graffiti writer. S stop. That's talk, talk to me about tag bangers. Tag bangers. That's Ta you are, you are, you're writing graffiti, and you in a gang. Damn, that's, so that pops. It does exist. Really? Yes. Yo, that's news. Wow. Yes, it does. And, and so for me, you know, growing up at the time, and I'm looking at a lot of this stuff happening mm. out here, I'm going, damn, that's, that's different. You know, it's a little different. Way different. And be careful, because you don't know. You never know. You never know. And I learned early, you never know. Really? You never in know. what context, never know? How do you mean? Well, you know, you go up in the low east side of Manhattan in New York in, in late the, the mid-70s there. And um, I'll be honest with you, a lot of stuff was going on, you know. And I, I learned later that it was one of the worst neighborhoods in our area. You had Alphabet City. Yeah. This is before crack came. A lot of heroin, a lot of coke. And I always used to always wonder, why would people from the Wall Street area, the financial district, or the court district, be coming into our area and then vice versa? Yeah, right. 
And later on, we figured out, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a money system. There's a money system that's there, both above ground and below ground. And so you, you find that out. And so for me, that's where you learn. You got to be careful because you never know what happens. There's systems around here that you might not be familiar with. Mm. And you got to be careful. Because if you <clears throat> kind of step into that world yeah. without any prior knowledge, yeah, it could be bad. could it, happen you to you very know. quickly. You never know. And, and I, I, like I'm saying, I've, I've been in situations where those things have happened and I've been around people while those things were happening, both really? in New York and, in L- and here in LA. And so it's, it's, it, it was a learning process for me. Yeah. When Just like you're saying, if you're walking into an unfamiliar situation, make sure you're familiar before you step in. Big time. And just for the safety factor, mm. you never know. Yeah. Um, would you say graffiti for its time, arguably now, do you think it's kind of the, what would be equivocal of the gateway drug to criminality, like the broken window effect of what would introduce people into the, the wider worlds of crime? You know, <laughs> the funny thing about where we come from, we were already criminals. Yeah, right. And then the outer world would, would perceive us yeah. to be criminals. When you could be doing a lot worse, to be and, fair. And, right, and then that, that just links right in, right? Because yeah. at that time, all we were doing was just writing on the wall. Mm. That's all we were doing. Mm. And in a lot of rights, it's, it's, it's expressing, we were expressing ourselves, you know, in, in a way that New York was ready to receive the expression, mm. but at the same time, they didn't know how to interpret it. Yeah. You know, and so you have this massive movement coming, and even New Yorkers were watching. Well, wow, wow, they just look like they took that regular just writing, mm-hmm. and now it's got all of these colors in it, oh, and it's that, 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 and it's on a train. Yeah. And then I go on the inside, and it looked like somebody made a marker and took that re- weird tag from the top of the the, the, the <laughs> panel, and it's dripping all the way down like that. What does that mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, when you get to that point, and you realize. The drippy tag was a sign of authority. Yeah. It was authority. <gasps> that was authority. When you put a tag and it's dripping like that, that meant something. It's a lot. It, it, it just says, bam. I'm in charge. I'm in control. <laughs> that kind of shit. Well, and, and each of us has that. That's the thing. And when you look at it, and and you you never want to have any one king in, in these types of situations because Kingdoms fall. All of them do. (laughs) And the good thing that we all have realized along the way, especially our crew members, is that we take care of one another. And Uh. every one person's got the same intel that the next person has. Uh. So that way your crew don't fall. And everybody stays linked up. And even if we're in different geographical areas, Uh. we can still communicate with each other. Yo, this is going on. I need you to come here. Just like what just happened. Just like what just happened. Uh. Tizza, Tizza threw me a line here, and here I am sitting right here with you. Yeah, yeah. That's the. I think that's the. Be- it's the that's the good connection. thing about graffiti. When you look about it, that's that answers your question. Yeah, it does. Um, I'm often so surprised. It's like a mini network. Yeah, it's like yes. You, you've always got a place to stay. You've always got people you roll with and paint with. And yes, yeah, and 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 you. I'm um, from the mm. time when it when it was happening in New York. We we come out of a neighborhood, right? We might have relatives in Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, you know, Staten Island, and we'll go take the train, you know, mm. and, and go visit the family. And while we're doing that, oh, yo, you see that tag over there? You see that piece, <laughs> yeah, yeah. man? Yo, yo, did you yeah. see that, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, yeah. you see that whole car right there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know that, you know what's gorgeous about that is that you could be talking about some shit that isn't anything to do with graph. Then all of a sudden you see something like yeah, that. Yeah, to grab you. And, grab, and the next thing, for the next hour you're talking about graph, and you've, you've completely forgotten the, the reasons you come together. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Oh, your shit, we're into graph. Fucking look at that yeah, burner. You know, yo. Look at that character. Yo, yeah, how yeah. did that dude do that with that tip? <laughs> so sick. Wait a minute. That's and the best you know, shit. the intriguing thing is to watch kids. Like you brought up um, uh, Dust from UTI. Uh, mm. this little, this, oh, this big dude up Dust, man. Yeah. Nasty. Yeah. And, and he's coming he keeps with it. changing his letters. And I look at his predecessors. You got guys like Fear. Mm-hmm. And I love Fear's kind of styles because it's a, it's got a contemporary to it. But he always, I mean, I remember giving him black books over the years, and he always put letter bender in it. Yeah. You know, and he was the letter bender. <laughs> and so how would you, how would that, if if you looking in a black book a couple of years later, and you a kid looking in this black book, uh-huh. and you see this nasty little fill right there, and it says letter bender, 
well, shoot, I want to learn how to be a lender better. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I want <laughs> some of that. Yes, want, please. Can I learn how to do and, and And, you know, if back in the day, Fear was really cool with that because I remember uh, there was a cat named Thanks coming up. And Fear helped home him up, you know, <laughs> and, he, and he would bring him over to the shop. Yo, can we paint? Go ahead. That's what it's here for. And Thanks would be getting his styles down and Fear would tell him, like, yo, hook this over this way, fix this this way. And that's one thing I always appreciated about the elders. The mm. elders would always take time to tell you if you really, if you really, really, really want to do this, you really want to do it, I'll show you how to do it. That's why I respect the old school, if you man. Really want to do it, I'll show yeah. you. Yeah. And it's and, and for some, for some, and I, I had a couple homeboys that was like this, you wouldn't pick it up overnight. Mm. And for others, you might get an outline from somebody and then the outline comes back and there might be four other ones. Yeah. And you see yeah. cats that's doing that, like, oh, snap. And I just gave this to you like two hours ago. Yeah. Man, what's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? they, and that's where you they, know they, it. It's in there, yeah. you know? And, and that's, that's, what, that's another thing where you can see, like, a lot of writers, you could tell it's an extra chromosome. Yeah. Even if you know, we're nuts in the process, but we got an extra chromosome. Amen. And, and not all parts of hip hop culture have, has that. The MC has it. It's in its way, you know. Mm -hmm. the, the, the MC has it in a way. The poetics of putting words that definitely don't belong together, mm -hmm. but finding that creative way to link them up and make it sound good. The DJ has it too, you know. He catching certain breaks. Mm -hmm. The way mm -hmm. the way the, the records are scratched up, and the patterns that they use, the and, and the timing. Mm -hmm. That's something else, and then it makes others. Well, how do you do that? Yeah, yeah. The break dancer. I I, I remember being. About, I was about nine or ten. And I'm watching the uh, Rocksteady crew. Pick up my gang. Yes. Crazy Legs, Frosty Freeze, those, there's a couple of them. I was yeah. watching them as a kid, and I'm like, these dudes is bonkers, bonkers man. Yeah. And totally how breed. It, the, the skill, the, yeah. and that, that led to some of us have that inherent skill for it. And if you look at the background of where a lot of us have come from, usually it, it comes from nothing. Yeah. And, and that skill is at the highest of high levels where there's nothing in the background. Yeah. Where there's a whole bunch there in the background, but it's interpreted as nothing. Yeah, that's right. So. Uh, um, there was an interesting conversation I had with a friend of mine downstairs today. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about things like this, the podcast. And okay, you, okay. You, you, you kind of tr triggered me into this, this conversation in, in saying what you did because I think when you're when you're doing something like this it could be perceived as like a really easy opportunity to do something as a documenter um the guy downstairs who I was talking to he was talking about skateboarding and how it had mm. um developed and mm. built to the point that even from a creative and business point of view right it's gone through the ranks yes. of yeah. you know even from the highest business people have been influenced so heavily with graffiti yeah. and th they don't necessarily do graffiti, but they right. are totally and utterly aware of its foundations. Yes. And it's, it's almost like elevated the whole scene up a, a notch yeah, that's because of it, true. its influence and yeah. the people that were in it are now in bigger places and able yes. to leverage it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I appreciate that too. Cause I look at uh, like my man Cope, you know, he's never stopped bombing, uh, you uh, know, and he stayed active throughout uh -huh. this time. And he was another one where you see it's there, it's in there, it's in him, you uh -huh. know, and it's something that this world can't take that out of him. Nah. Never, you know, nah. and I would I would say is he'll keep going, 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 and going. And I'm glad that he's doing this because yeah. it's taken him around the world. He's been able to inspire people and... I don't care about what anybody says about any kind of negative. He nonsense. done his. He I does don't his thing. Care, man, because I, I've known him for long enough, and it's been like this. Hmm. And just like you said, you'll know. Hmm. A lot of the stuff that was, I'm like, come on, man. And he was. He he's this. His heart is huge, and that's the other side of it too. You could be a graffiti writer, and sometimes you got to be a beast as you as a graffiti writer. Hmm. But his heart is huge at the same time, uh, you know. So I thought for me over time, that's great when you run into people like that too. Yeah, for know? real. And, then have, and that they have that kind of intuition, I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing. Yeah. It's beyond fame, fortune, anything else. It's just a, a, 
a movement greater than me mm. that's in me moving mm -hmm. and making me move at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this movement is beautification. And people can appreciate that. Take a piece of it, put it in their house, mm -hmm. put it in their office or something, mm -hmm. and, or walk around with it, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and have it, and 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 show someone else, like yo, yo, look at look at this, you know, this is this is nice, right? Real here. talk, real talk. And, and like I'm saying, you know, and so that's that for me is is always been a really great part about this culture mm -hmm. is that we can can keep uh, looking towards newness. Mm -hmm. there's, there's there's never any. Useless gray hairs. <laughs> <laughs> Big that up. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, no, real talk. Uh, have you have you ever come to has it ever come to a point in your career path as a writer where it's been you you've you found yourself in question as to where it's all going and what it all means and where mm -hmm. you know, has this been a wasted life? Has this been a life of pure creative output? And then, you know, you go down the rabbit hole of, I don't know. Have you ever had that? Yeah, you know, um, there's been a number of times where I remember it was around 87, 88, and um, the raids and the, the trains started happening, a little bit more than normal. Mm -hmm. And we none of us ever wanted to get caught writing graffiti, if you can help it. You know, mm -hmm. a couple of us got caught, and, you know, me being when I got, got caught once or twice, they let me go, fine, you know, no big deal. But... Um, I've gotten to the point where I said, I got to figure out what to do, right? Mm -hmm. And my sister, my oldest sister, she's an artist, and most of my family was telling me too at the time, um, if this thing is in you and it's really something that you want to do, you'll figure out how to do it later. And then something greater than you will show you how to continue to do it. And I say that now because <sighs> I'm, in, I'm 52. <sighs> I'm a resident artist in Bixby Knowles in a gallery. And this gallery has been there and we're doing a lot of things, cultivating and then collaborating with a lot of folks that are there. Wow. And just like you said, the influence of graffiti is, you might have to see it all yeah, the time, yeah, yeah. but the influence is there. Yeah. And so much that the influence being there, our art curator said the presence has to stay there. And so I went, okay, all right. So he says, well, you know what? I'm getting old. It's your turn. Your turn. And I'm like, hey, wait a minute. Hold on. It's Tornado Mike. We call him Tornado Mike. Big up Tornado um, Mike. Big up, big up Tornado Mike. The Jones Party. Um, he told me a long time ago, and he was pretty prophetic. Not prophetic in telling prophecy, but prophetic in being truth, a, a truth teller. Yeah. You know, I love them people. He, man. Oh, man. <laughs> and he would tell me certain things 10, 15 years prior. He said, you watch, watch. Oh, God, I love it. And they're right, and they're always right. That's oh, all shit. man. And, and I've spent the last 20 years telling them, you told me, you know. And it creates a good discussion. It's a conversation again at that point. But he told me along the way, just like you were doing, it, this part of it is one thing. Hmm. People don't know the work that goes on behind yeah, the camera. They don't true. see what happens, and you have to set the stuff up, and, mm -hmm. and you got the mics, and 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 you, it, you're mm -hmm. in here by yourself. You don't got someone doing it mm -hmm. for you. You're doing it by yourself. Mm -hmm. My art curator was like that. Mm -hmm. He would build a, a set inside inside the gallery, and he would start it two months in advance, and slowly promote it at shit, the man. same yeah. time. Yeah. And by the time you get to the to the showcase. He's looking at everybody scrambling day of, and he's just looking, looking around, going, "Well, you know, at least I'm not going to have a brain aneurysm or a heart attack tonight, <laughs> and I can enjoy the show, you mm -hmm. know, and I can take my time." That's the other thing he, he taught us is to take your time. What are you rushing around for? Just take your time. And I appreciate that because he said, "It's your turn." Yeah, that's it's so beautiful. Going, wow, wow, and that that just says, "Okay, it keeps going." Mm. Talk to me about the curation of that because I'm, I'm very intrigued. This is, this is news, and it's fucking awesome that you've got these things going on in, mm -hmm. in your your life right now. Talk, mm -hmm. talk to me about that. Yeah, um, I think it, this, the shop was in existence for a while, and and Mike came to the shop. His his name is Michael Kirk. Where was the shop based? Uh, it off. started in Long Beach. The first location was 1143 Pine. Uh, the second location went to. Um, uh, 1008 PCH, so right where like VIP folk, Records folk is. Law. See, this is some fucking right urban folklore. Right where folk VIP law. Records is, and right next door. So we would bring customers over, we would share customers, yeah. and whenever we threw a jam, 
We tell everybody, you go inside the market center and you share. That's how you create your, 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 you coach, your, your, your economy. Yeah. You know, keep your, your, your inner community economy running. And everybody was happy because everyone ate, you mm. know, and, and we shared stuff you mm -hmm. know, in terms of customers. And, and that made it special. The last location, we ended up on 8th Street and Long Beach Boulevard, mm -hmm. which was good. Um, <clears throat> in that time, it's like around 2008, Michael Kirk comes. And, he, and he's intrigued. We had a jam one day. I think Coke 2 was there. I think Coke 2 had, had come. And, he's, and he was tripping. And he's like, I can't believe all of this stuff was going on. You know, you got all of this happening. And he said this was like a, a rave walking in through this jam because you had this happening over here, some other attraction happening this way, and it led you right into the back of this yard. So sick. There's dozens of people back there and um, crews from all over the place, and everyone's having a good time. God, and that's good. Painting. We got food, there's music, and everyone's just having a good time. Sounds like a dream. And, and, and we kept doing it. We, twice a month we'd do it. And uh, my lady would be out there cooking, and uh, she'd have a cheese line. We call it the cheese line. She'd, mm -hmm. she'd make tacos and all that. It was, she'd just slaughter it. Um, and and Michael, Michael was like, I can't believe you guys is doing all of this mm -hmm. back here. And, and City's not saying no. City knows we're down here. And City, by a 6th District Council member, keep doing what you're doing. I don't understand how you get everybody's attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pay attention. You'll understand how to get the attention. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. you know? So for a district council person to come in, and he's looking around, and that gave us the green light. Keep of course. Going. Keep going. Yeah. And so um, Mike said he was getting ready to do something at the same particular gallery, like I said, it's around 2008. And he goes in and opens up a Jones studio, and it's surrounding, get this, currency. Really? Yeah. He had this big idea about explaining to people about currency. Wow. And the good thing about it, because he said, this world is coming to a point where anyone's going to make up their own currency. He said that in 2008. I'll leave it at that. That's a different, wow. that's a rabbit trail of a yeah, 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 story. Yeah. That's all another but, podcast right there. Man. <laughs> um, so he was in tune with a lot of stuff, and, and he kept us privy to what was happening. And the, in the meantime, he would set up these art, art setups. Mm. And then he would call us in there. We have... 20 years worth of artwork sitting in there. And then he would come in and then set this stuff up in certain ways. And wow. then have a bunch of people coming from all over, yeah. line dance kind of thing. And everyone's just enjoying the artwork, you know? And he did that for a number of years. And then he was like, look, man, I'm tired. I got stuff going on and I'm out. I'm out. And so he, he, he helps from a distance, but... I think it's 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 great that at least he's still involved in it. And it's in safe hands. So you you this is what you're dealing. This is your day to day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fucking fantastic. Yeah. I mean, isn't that such a testament to your lifespan as an artist? To the point that it's almost like a bit of a salute. It's almost like a, you know, a green light. Yeah. You then move into this you, into this field of of creative space. Yeah. <gasps> yeah, and it's it's a fun thing because mm. you can still share. And then you're still in a connected with people. Mm -hmm. And I think deep embedded inside of community is unity. Mm -hmm. And you always want to have that in terms of just being able to share element of energy with people mm -hmm. and keeping that positive. Mm -hmm. And you keep that electric like that. I mean, the world would be a better place. 100%. You know? I think graffiti moves people to that place. With all the negatives and positives and things that you have to go through as a writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, I'm they're, there. Yeah. Yeah, they're there. Yeah, they're there. They're there. It's hard for people, but, but once you get over certain hurdles and a level of maturity... Yeah, that's then. the other part about it, too. And that's the growth. That's mm -hmm. the growth is, yeah. can I mature? You know, not only mature myself, but if I'm, a, if I'm attempting to do something outside of myself, I have to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And I got to be sure enough, know enough. And if I don't, do I have connections enough to make it happen? So you see, I keep, do you ever feel like or have ever felt like that graffiti kind of breeds, can kind of breed negative elements. And if you want to go over to that next level, you've got to really have good people around you that have that positive energy. Yeah. How, how hard is it to cut away from certain things? Even people, how hard is it to cut away from certain people and certain scenarios? How do you learn to switch off when those negative 
conversations come into, you know, into subject? How do you do that? I think when you consider your consequence, your level of consequence, and like tonight, I have some place to go, uh. right? So if I'm going bombing, what do I need to do after that? Uh. So if I'm going to go bombing for a couple hours or whatever, there's something else I have to do after that. And I got to stay focused on that too. Uh. It's not just go bombing and go to bed, you know, go to sleep uh. or whatever. There's always something else. Uh. When I was young, I, yeah, I can go bombing and then come home and crash out. Uh. Life happens to yeah. all of us. And I think for, for me, graffiti had said, and I call it today, it's like a therapy. Because you're out here in this crazy world and there's a, there's a bunch of insane, maddening things happening. Mm -hmm. And we're walking around sick people too. You know, a lot of folks is off in ways. And we grew up in, this, in an area where um, New York, it was called a rotten apple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so it, it, and and it's it served. It's it, it's it was it, it it really was a lot of lot of places was bad. Yeah. You know, and and it's not any different from any urban center. I'm sure you've seen the same thing. You know, of course, of course. Any and, any well developed and moving city has those. Yeah, and, those and elements too. you know, at some point, when you're young, yeah, you want to go charging right into it. Sometimes even when you're older, you may want to go run mm. and charge into it. At some point when wisdom sets in, do I know when to run and charge into it? Oh, God, he said that. That's and exactly. It, it's, you got to be calculated in what you do. Choose your and fights as well. Choose your fights. Yes, yeah. yeah. And then, I mean, I got to big up my man Thoughts. He made, he made the stood yeah. the, the yeah, For those special, ain't uh, right? thoughts watching one, and thoughts listening, one. yeah. Me and Dope him was reading Sun Tzu, right? And, and it's a couple years ago. And, and we were talking about war. And you watch people put out a bunch of resources for war. Mm. All to find out when there's the wise man sitting there going, when are you two sides gonna figure out you're wasting your resources, yeah. you're wasting everything else, including your time that you yeah. can't get back, the resources resource you can get back, your time you can't. Yeah. Um, when are you gonna realize that not fighting in these instances? Sometimes you have to, and, that, and mm. that's, you, there's those times that you will have to, but the more that you don't have to, and you realize, and you calculate when to, and and not to try to size up. I, I I've seen a lot of times in, in sizing up. Mm. How do I know if I'm sizing right? Yeah, you know, I might be sizing wrong. Do you think these strategies <clears throat> make for a great? You know, you know. I mean, we're talking to somebody that's on both sides of the coin with some dope fucking crews. Do you think that's what makes a great crew? People that know how to yeah. individually know how to operate in that yeah. manner. Yeah, yeah. I I've said this a while back where. <clears throat> The true part about this is that in your crew, you want live wires. Uh. You want that person that's a little the elevator, don't go all the way upstairs, and that's okay. <laughs> and um, but that person's still extremely extremely calculated. Yes. This person might just be off a little bit, but knows how to do things. Uh -huh. And and you want that. And so I noticed for our crews, the way that they've been. You had that. I remember TDT the way it was. The, the original name was the drug team. It became the dream team because <laughs> the drug team wasn't the right way to go. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It became the dream team because we, when, you want, when you're doing what you're doing like that, you're not paying attention no more. Yeah. It takes you, takes you elsewhere. And you, if you're trying to bomb and you're lit, those negative things that come in a lot faster and a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. And I, I big up to my man Conan TDT KGB. He was the one that said he's been clean for well over twenty years. That's amazing. And he was one that was just nuts. That you didn't see that ever happening. Nuts. Mm. You know. And he 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 said to me, he said, you know, Z, you know, think for me. My body told me I couldn't do that like yeah. that no more. I mean, I could still write. I could write anywhere I want. He still takes tags. Nice. I remember me, him, Seek, my man Ox. Um, we went to a tough city a number of years back. And we were all chilling there together. Conan's the elder. We're mm -hmm. the younger dudes, but we're all adults. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So he used to always look out for us when we was kids, but now we're, you know, we're older and <laughs> he's kicking back, you know, he's just it's kicking back, thing. chilling, yeah, and yeah. We're, we're over there peacing and bombing, and he's taking tags and this and that. God, and, that sounds um, good. It, it yeah. was fun. Yeah. You know, it was fun. And then this was another time, and I, this is a, years and years, light years later. Um, Kings Destroy got together when Coke 2 came out to Los Angeles. I think this was, uh, num this was a number of years back, and we were, at, we were at, all at the Graffiti Lab. Mm -hmm. Peace and big ups to my man, Dooms GBC. 
Mm-hmm. Me and him got together. We, you know, he said, "Yo, let's go. We, you know, let's come out." My man Tuna, Tuna, peace to Tuna, and everybody down in, in um, KD, LA, you know, uh, in the LA area, California area, Pizer, um, man, there's uh, Fuss. There's so many cats, man. Um, Dose Rock, uh, Space, you know, there's so many. Mm-hmm. And, and the thing is, like you're saying, each of them had an intricacy of craziness, mm-hmm. and and. And you notice know, intricacy of craziness, mm. and you want that. Yeah, you, you need that, that propels yeah. things forward. You want that, and and that crazy person knows when to be crazy, <laughs> and and we we learn that over time. Mm. You know, uh, it, it's and it's a couple of us we're certified nuts. Mm. You know, and and after over time, you go, okay, all right, you figure this out. I still want to keep breathing. Mm. So, you know, you, you keep your crazy to a crazy when you let it out. Then, you know, you can let it out when it's really yeah. crazy. You know, and just calculate it. And, it's, and, and so, it's, you know. it's passionate as well. Yes, yeah. Talking of which, um, does, you know, in the years that you've done graph, the passion ever leave you? No. No? No. I, like I tell you, man, it's an extra chromosome. Yeah. It's just an extra chromosome. Always there. Yeah. You yeah, get the itch, you want to go bombing, you just take... Take I off. always have something on me for some reason. Really? And um, I, I try not to these days because <laughs> after a while you get to, and I, rem- I remember so many people have said, I'll always come back, you know. And, and and that's great, but, you know, when you have your semblance of things, sometimes you can't do that that Ooh, way. Yeah. And so, and then you, you think of your risks mm-hmm. and, and, and you evaluate what these risks can be. And responsibilities and things like that. Right. Things and stuff like that. You know, here again, you know, like I said, I still have some place to go this evening. I got something to do in the morning. Mm-hmm. And um, those things themselves don't stop either. Yeah. And so graffiti became, like I was telling you, it's like therapy for me in a, in a lot of ways because, you know, mm-hmm. um, but it's, it was one way for me to go, I'm happy doing this. I'm happy con- concept with hand-eye coordination to a platform. Mm-hmm. And then from a platform, can I transition that f- to the wall? Yeah. That takes a lot. You know? yeah, yeah, and then yeah. for anyone that's doing Believe that, me. it's not just, you know, many of the great artists over time have said it's not just spraying on a wall and then you... Nah, you have to figure out what you're going to do. Really figure it out. Yeah. Transferal of that, even yes. from a size point of view. Oh, yeah. I mean, and you're right about the therapy side of it. I mean, God, like, it's it's, it's like a one beautiful puzzle that takes your mind away from the bullshit, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that's the fun part of it is uh, graffiti is, it, it for me, you know, when you look, all of these colors, you know, mm. and what can you do with these letters? You got backgrounds and this and that and that. I remember someone doing a one-page black book piece. Mm-hmm. Next time you look at a black book or you flip a couple of pages deeper, somebody's got a two-page black book piece. Mm-hmm. I remember I gave, I was in junior high school, I gave my book to one of these cats in Craftwork Kings, and he gave my book back, and it was one, two, three, four, five, six burners. Stop it. What? And it's all folded. Whoa. Sick. And I'm going, yo! <laughs> and then... He tells me, give me the book back. One of my homeboys is doing 3D pieces. And so when you open up the book, the piece has a 3D texture to it. (gasps) But he's folding it a little bit and doing Mm -hmm. some things. So when you open it up, it's like one of those pop-up cards. Yeah. And it's all graph on it. Like, you know, like, oh, snap. And someone with an engineering mind Mm. could be able to do that and then putting... The notion of graffiti in, in, in as a main ingredient. That's beautiful. Uh, you know. That that's love. Yes. And like you said, uh, you, you mentioned a passion. Mm. And, and passion will drive you in a way. It, yeah. it'll, it'll pull you to places. And that's a good thing. You always want to be able to stretch yourself and not get comfortable in just doing the same thing. Mm. You always want to keep pushing the limit if you can do it. Push the limit. Pushing the limit. And you must see a lot of limit pushing when you're at an exhibition place. When you're in that place where you're seeing things come in, that's got to be super inspirational, yeah. isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's a good feeling. Yeah, man. It's a good feeling. So that's the future? Hey, man, we're looking right at it. There's your future, people. Yep. CZ is giving us a real insight into the scene and where you've journeyed and because of the the vastness of it and your creative input to it it's really given us a great intro 
to the West Coast, from East to West. Absolutely, absolutely. CZ, thank you so much for joining hey, us on man. podcast. It's good, Cal. It's good, Cal. <laughs> like I said, it's an honor to be here. You know, like I, once again, big up Tezza. And, yeah. Uh, and Sharks, all tight Sharks. Yeah, I got it. Got it. Sharks, man. Thank you. You know, and uh, Tuku yeah, Tony, you already know. You already, you already know. know. Mr. Heavy Crates. <laughs> You know what it is, people. Killer Killer <laughs> Podcast from the US to UK and back around Europe and back here again. Mm-hmm. Sharing is caring. You know what it do. Tell a friend to tell a friend. We do this for you. Crime don't pay, but neither do they. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Thanks, EZ. Hey, peace, peace. Peace. Stay lucky, people. Peace. Okay. <laughs> 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 <laughs>